So Nate Eaton, who is with the East Idaho News, recently spoke with a woman who was pod mates, if you will, with Lori Daybell, and she lived to tell her tale about it. Now, the jail officials did confirm to Nate in East Idaho News that yes, they were, you know, pod mates. They were pod mates for these four specific days, March 4th through the 8th. Uh, and to that part of the story, we can verify. Now, the rest of the story, <laughs> slap yourself with allegedly up one side down the next because here's the deal we don't know what they really said a lot of times when we hear about these type situations where you know a cellmate or whatever comes forward we just have to kind of question it so just go into this treating it as such but now if you're ready to start dishing on the dirt let's go now she didn't want to use her real name so she went by the name missy cook Missy Cook. Again, Missy Cook was basically put into this pod for a disciplinary lockdown. And so she was in there between March 4th and 8th. Now, basically she was like, you know what? The entire jail was just like on alert. They knew that Lori was coming back. She was the talk of the town. Everybody wanted to catch a glimpse of her. So Cook says that when she finally was able to like, you know, conversate with Lori, uh, she did not ask her about the children. She did not want to talk about that subject. Basically, she's like, I wanted to gain her trust to, you know, hopefully get as much info as possible. Now, Cook also said, you know what? Hey, look, I was wrongly accused of something at one point in time, so I know what that feels like, and she didn't want to just come right at Lori with that. Remember, this is like the beginning of this case where a lot of people, and even Cook says this herself, we all thought that the kids were like in some commune or, you know, something like that, some commune pound something that Lori and Chad were shelving them around. Nobody really at that point wanted to accept that, oh my gosh, what we ended up learning happened happened. Now, she said that Lori was very friendly. She was very upbeat. Uh, she never cried. She really didn't show like any kind of like weakness or anything like that. And she also said that Lori basically talked about how happy she was to be out of the correctional center in Kauai, Hawaii. You know, and how it was so awful and how this one that she was at now was so much nicer. Now, once the media all started like, you know, hanging out and things are happening and this is, you know, this huge deal, she said Lori was completely aware of the fact that she was like a major news headline you know she was above like COVID and all these other major things and she said not only was Lori aware of it but she loved it now I think we all could pretty much put two and two together with that already this is just kind of confirming it again allegedly if these conversations and all this type of stuff is true now she does say that yeah Lori was like super worried about her appearance and what she was gonna look like for the court for the camera so on and so forth and so this is where we get the Jolly Rancher makeup from now Cook did lend her some stuff like lotion and you know like a pencil for mascara and things like that to kind of help her like put her look together now also going on this time remember you know Lori's got this million dollar bond cook said that she desperately wanted to bond out and that she was constantly meeting with lawyers and she said one time before one of these lawyer visits Lori ran her finger from like her head you know down her body and was like we'll see if this is worth a million bucks clearly it wasn't though now she said that Lori you know did a lot of talking to people like Chad uh, her son Colby and she said that you know some of the conversations she could kind of hear uh, some of them she just had to listen to what Lori was saying and so this again is where it gets a little bit like uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. we're taking this with a grain of salt but she said that Colby would ask you know where are the kids where are the kids where are the kids and of course Lori would never answer him and essentially he would grow frustrated with this and when this would happen she would tell him to read the scriptures you know read the book of Job and she would compare herself to Job you know she said look you'll better understand what I'm going through I'm being tested like Job was Cook also described the conversations that she heard take place between Lori and Chad as <laughs> nauseating. Y'all, we can probably go ahead and assume that that part is 100% truth because you know they were. She said that Debo like, wanted affection from Chad. She wanted reassurance that he loved her. And she was always making sure that she looked good if they communicated. So again, some of the stuff is just like, I have no doubt that some of the stuff is probably true. Just to what degree it's true. But regardless, we've already seen from her behavior that this isn't a surprise. You know, they're off uh, smiling and laughing and playing, you know, their little instruments in Hawaii, full well 
knowing what has taken place. So the fact that this is the, her concern while she's you know an incarcerated and the whole world is asking her where her children are doesn't come as a shocker. Now Cook says all the time they spend together, Lori never talked about JJ or Tylee. Now another thing that Cook said really resonates with her that Lori said is that everything has a purpose, God has a plan for everyone, and his plan will be accomplished. I find those words pretty haunting because they probably are relatively true to her train of thought. Now eventually Cook was transferred out of this pod and eventually was released. Now basically she gives her two cents and says you know what she thinks that Lori will flip on Chad. Essentially she's just like you know what if Lori is as vindictive as she supposedly is I mean there's a no-brainer. The kids were on his property. She could easily point the finger at him. So we'll see who flips first. I think they will fight over who can tell on each other first. Now, if you want to watch the rest of my commentary on this case, just click the videos that are popping up right now. I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for watching.